What's going on guys, the Inhuman Beatdown, I'm back with more Unlimited Blade Works. So, last time, uh, well, <laughs> things pretty much went downhill really fast. Ren found herself without a servant, Shiro was already dealing with the loss. Sorry about that, as I was saying, uh... Ren doesn't have a servant, Shiro doesn't have a servant, and Caster finds herself with three servants on her side. Uh, two and a half, I suppose, at this point. And also a badass, uh, I don't know if it's fair to even say his back his background yet, because I don't, I don't remember if they've exposited that yet. Eh, that might be something exposited in Holotraxia. Anyways, um, yeah, so, uh, hmm. our only hope is to, uh, Beg for hope with uh, the other with other characters and hope that they come through. So let's begin. Time for day thirteen interlude. That was fast. She is alone with her thoughts in the darkness. It has been a day since she attacked the church and killed the priest. It has been a day since she declared that she can find it, no matter where it may be hidden, if it exists. It may not be the case for the other servants, but there is no way someone versed in magic like her would not be able to find a relic as holy as the Holy Grail. Then there is only one answer. The Holy Grail was never hidden in this church to begin with. She sighs and puts her fingers on her temple. When she closes her eyes, heavy darkness assails her body. No, it is just a scream. It is not coming from outside. The scream comes from her body and mind, telling her that her fatigue is at the limit. It's been a month since she was summoned. Jesus! Since then, she has done her best to win. Her master is an ordinary person without a magic circuit, and she's the weakest of the servants. Uh, I would argue Assassin is the weakest, but whatever. To make up for that, she abused forbidden magic collection from the people, the magical string she placed throughout the town, and the control of the ley line using sacrifices. <clears throat> Excuse me. These are all reasons why she was called a witch during her life. But she has never used them before. She should have never used them before- used them, and she did not intend to do the forbidden. So, why did she end up using them for a meaningless conflict like this? She became a heroic spirit to take revenge. But she also knows it is meaningless to use the skills that labeled her a witch. She only uses trivial magic. She only created disasters that caused people to destroy themselves with their own greed. And that was all the revenge she could manage. So what caused her to stray from her path so much? It is all for the Holy Grail. It is natural for me to go crazy for something that can gr that can grant any wish. That is a lie. She knows the true identity of the Holy Grail. She already knows what that thing is and why servants like her are summoned. It is true that most wishes can be granted using the Holy Grail that appears in this town. It will allow her to stay in this world with physical form, and it will allow her to start a second life as a human. But... How stupid. There is no meaning in such a thing. Saying so, she closes her eyes. She empties her mind. For now, she lets her guard down and rests her mind. She hears the sound of rain. It was a night without moonlight. The surroundings were pitch black, and she wandered with an empty mind. That is where she met him. With blood-stained body and frozen limbs... A chanced meeting that was more miraculous than any miracle. It was the mountain where the Ryudo Temple is located. Falling rain. She was stumbling aimlessly through the dense forest. <sighs> Panting. She left behind a trail of blood. In her hand was a dagger that breaks all contracts. Her purple robe was wet with rain and her limbs had turned white from the winter cold. She staggered around, holding onto the trees for support. She walked on, dirtied with mud, her breath ragged, reaching out her hand as if begging for help. 
She did not look like her usual self, filled with cool composure. No, even the amount of magical energy was unlike her. She was exhausted. She only had a handful of power left. For a servant, magical energy is like a lifeline that allows them to stay in this world. But that was all lost. No magical energy was coming from her master. But that was only natural. She had just killed her own master. Okay, fun topic I like to bring up for this. So, now we know this. Suichiro Kuzuki is not Caster's original master. And that's good, because I want to get this out of the way, because... I love discussing this because it's just, it's the epitome of kind of how ass-backwards fate can be sometimes. So let me set you a basis here. We are never specifically shown or told who Caster's Master is in any route. Even just now, it was just one sentence. She killed her master. All right? Now, unless the game proves me wrong, and it could, it's done that a couple times so far, we never learn the name of, his, of her master, we never learn what her master's plan was, or what, actually I think we do find out what led to her killing her master. Now, here's the problem with this. Fate has a canon for this already. Fate has explained who her master is. Apparently, he was a guy from he was a guy from the church. He was uh, not not from the church, mage association. He was a mage, uh, and I don't remember his name because he matters that little. Uh, anyways, the reason why she kills him varies in multiple in multiple continuities. Like depending on whether or not you go across from the visual novel's point of view, which I don't know if they're going to explain that or not. Uh, if you go from uh, one of the side series explanation, or if you go from the manga's explanation, there are multiple explanations as to how this character, or why this character was killed. Ultimately, it still, it still ended with, Caster hated him, so she murdered him. It just varies on what reason it happened for. But it always, I always find it interesting, not really interesting, but kind of like a backwards telling, that it was... I don't want to say so long after Stay Night came out, but it was definitely several side series afterwards of Fate Stay Night that we did that maybe we learned this character's name in an extra material or something. I don't know. But I always find it interesting that it's like, we weren't told this character in the original source. Why did they care to make a big deal and explain who he was in other sources then? It just seems really weird and is a natural habit fate has. It's kind of like how... Uh, I don't want to explain that one yet because that will ruin something that's going to happen. But let's just say fate is a bad habit of, going, of saying, mm, this happened for a reason. Okay, why? Well, you won't know until this point where we tell you why. But why does it matter for here except to explain it there? It doesn't. What? Anyways, I just wanted to get that out of the way. It still bothers me to this day. That was the cause of her exhaustion. She, Servant Caster, was about to disappear alone as compensation for obtaining freedom. A dry laugh. It is funny that her body was not able to maintain itself and that she betrayed her vulgar master. Moreover, it's quite amusing to see how badly she had underestimated the relationship between servant and master. She had done well. Her master was a legitimate magus. He was in his thirties, had a medium build, and had a few noteworthy characteristics. How very vague. He had no will to fight, but dreamed of victory. He was a man that only waited for other masters to kill each other. That's not necessarily true, depending on which explanation you go for. The man had not trusted Castor. That was true. He treated Castor coldly as she was a superior magus, and he insulted her for being inferior to other servants. Eh, that's part of it. Not wholly accurate, though. She gave up on him after a few days. That was true. 
She acted as an obedient servant and filled the man's conceit. In short, she made him use his command spells for meaningless things. That was true. Well, kind of. She told him he did not need the command spells. Again, that varies depending on source. She made him believe that she would be faithful to her master even without the command spell. That's totally not true. In most sources, he actually used the command spells to force her obedience. It was his fault for her b for believing in her. The master used his third command spell for a meaningless thing and was killed by Castor at that moment. It was easy. She did not like the fact that the contract with him still s existed, so she killed him using the rule breaker. Again... <laughs> That kind of varies, because in most cases, it was kind of... God, I'm trying to think. So, in one telling, it's... He was basically like a disgusting, vulgar, misogynistic piece of shit. He was a man, she was a woman, she was automatically inferior to him. And, of course, being a woman, she was only good for one purpose, and that was fucking. Which he used a command spell to force her to do. She didn't take too kindly to that, she killed him. I don't know if the command seal part of that is true or not. I'm pretty sure she wouldn't have to, though. Maybe she did, though, just so she could force it and use Rule Breaker to kill him. Not actually sure about that one. In another one, it tells that he tried to force her to summon a giant monster that was beyond her power, and then he insulted her a bunch, insinuating that she sucked, and then forced the command spells to uh, break the contract, and she murdered him. Like I said, it's very confusing, but this is also a series that holds tightly to the Knights of the Round Table mythology, and we've never seen Morgan Le Fay in any official capacity. The flashbacks in Apocrypha do not count. Most of those were invented for the anime and were not actually in the books. In fact, in most cases in the books, Morgan Le Fay is talked about but never described. She's given a kind of form, but also like Guinevere, we have no idea what the fuck her face looks like. And even then, more contradictory images of if you want to go on based upon what certain series said, what an extra material said, or the first appearance of her in the Fate in the Fate Stay Night manga adaptation, which had her just with long curly brown hair and pregnant with Mordred, like natural childbirth kind of way, even though that would later be contradicted by the fact that we know Mordred is a homunculus. But that was also at the time where Mordred was literally just Red Artoria, so, you know, hi, welcome to fate. Even in the beginning, it was confusing as fuck. Anyways. But she had made a mistake. Servants exist using the supply of magical energy provided by their masters. But not just magical energy. Servants are only allowed to exist in this age by being connected with people of this age. In other words, to lose one's master, the passport to this age, means being forced to return to the outside world. But she would not normally be this exhausted. This was the curse her master had left her. Her master did not approve of her, as she was a better magus than he was. Therefore, he limited her magical energy to be always below his level. Again, that kind of varies depending on what source you're reading. The magical energy level of a mere human cannot keep a servant in this world. She would normally be able to stay in this world for two days after losing her master, but now it was different. Her magical energy was drastically decreasing with every second, and the end was near. Probably a few more minutes. She would disappear if she could not find her next master in that time. She would disappear before she could fight, unable to do anything. She would be a pitiful servant, summoned only to be trampled upon. It was vexing. It was vexing, but it wasn't anything out of the ordinary. It had always been like this for her. She was treated unreasonably like this all the time. She was always used as a tool, and she was never understood by anyone. Oh, woe is her. Yes. Her life was always controlled by someone else. Her mind was destroyed at a young age to save a hero chosen by the gods. Just for the sake of a hero, the goddess of beauty happened to favor. The goddess cursed her to blindly love a man she had never seen. The girl betrayed her father, and she was even forced to betray her own country. This is no memory. There is no memory after that. After everything was over, the girl who was a princess was in an unfamiliar country. The girl that betrayed her father, the king, for a man. 
a witch that cut apart her own brother and threw the pieces into the sea to escape their native country. And the man who wanted it done cast her aside in order to become king, saying he could not marry a witch. You need to understand why they made him a douchebag in FGO now. She was controlled and taken to an unknown country, was marked as a witch, and the only person she could rely on threw her away. That is her origin. There is nothing people can blame her for, and people around her were aware of that. Look, I've heard Medusa's backstory, and that still doesn't make any fucking sense to me, so... I mean, you're just shit out of luck in that one. But still, people continued to demand... Demand... To demand for her to... Oh, demand for her to be a witch. An evil to protect the king. An evil to be on the receiving end of evil superstitions. People wanted a convenient scapegoat that they could blame for any disaster. This pattern has never changed. People demand easily understandable evil to reassure themselves of their own goodness. In that regard, she was the perfect sacrifice. The father she could rely on was in a distant country. Nobody defended her, and people gladly blamed her for all the ugly things in their world. Getting kind of Salem Witch Trials flashbacks. Although I'm pretty sure this predates that. They decided that every ugliness was the witch's doing. That they are poor. That they hate others. That humans are ugly. And even that people die. So she merely accepted it. Since she could only live as a witch, she decided to live like a witch. She swore to show them the ugliness of the wishes they demanded of her. If people do not know their ugliness, so be it. They can stay ignorant, go to hell for their own crimes, and suffer forever. They won't be able to get out of hell. They will suffer forever as criminals because they do not know what crimes they have committed. And that is the reason for existing for... That is the reason for existence she imposed on herself. That is the only role people gave to the girl, to the one called the witch, who never had a free will. But, nobody actually wished for such a thing. The same goes for her as well. She seeks revenge against her will, without having any wish for herself. Yes. Until she met up with this stranger. A rustling sound. She peered ahead even though she was barely able to stand. It's midnight. Who could possibly come into, the fo into this forest at this time? What are you doing here? There. It was a heavy voice. She did not have the composure to check who it was. She just thought it was all over. She had no power to use magic. Her purple robe might have looked like a coat, but she was covered in blood. A woman covered in blood was hiding in the rain. It is obvious what such a person did. Anyone would run away first. What would they do after that? They would either call the police or pretend they hadn't seen it. It did not matter to her as she could no longer move. That caused the last of her spirit to give out. Her last moment was cold and lonely, just as it was at the end of her true lifetime. Or so she thought. I'm a little disappointed there's no CG for this. I think it's added for the Rialta Nua version. When she regained consciousness, she was in that place. In front of her is that man. <laughs> the main antagonist from Guilty Gear? The man who she met in the woods. Oh. So, you've awakened. Can you tell me your circumstances? I don't remember the voice I did for Kuzuki. Bear with me. <laughs> Those were his first words. When she watched the man with blank... When she watched the man with blank amazement. Go home if I did a needless thing. If you wish for me to forget about this, I shall do so. The tone of his voice never changed. And that was her first encounter with her master, Kuzuki Suichiro. Kuzuki was a strange man. Should he be called a ghost? He had no reason to live, but had no reason to die. He was just there, and since he existed, he followed whatever whim took him. He has no self. 
That was her first impression of him, and she thought it would be easy to turn him into a puppet. She grew to realize that the thought was a mistake. Kusuki Surichiro does not have a past. He has no self because he has no past. But it does not mean Kusuki Surichiro is empty. Kusuki was a sincere man. He easily accepted her when she told him told him that she wanted him to be her master, and when she told him about her true identity. When she asked him, do you believe such a story? He replied, was that a lie? He accepted it after she told him it was the truth. And the most amazing part was the night they met. As she was about to disappear, she told Kuzuki to lay with her. After making a difficult expression, God damn it. Let me ask, do you want it rough or gentle? Well, I wasn't expecting that. After that, he made love to her without waiting for her reply. Alright, I didn't know that happened. They don't show it, but I didn't know that happened. Wow. To put it his way, they had sex before the Buddha. Wow, okay. It seemed rough like Asura. But he also seemed gentle, like Bodhisattva. Either way, the contract was completed. Interesting way to seal the deal. Y yo, you want to become my master? Sure, but we gotta fuck first. <laughs> she obtained a new master, was able to stay in this world, and return to her role of being a witch. She still considers it to be a miracle. She would have disappeared before she woke up if she wasn't taken to the Ryudo Temple. The Ryudo Temple is a demonic place for servants, but it is a perfect summoning place once inside. As the Ryudo Temple is surrounded by a boundary field, it is suited for keeping anything inhuman. She was able to remain without disappearing because she was brought to the Ryudo Temple. Had it been any place else, there's no space in those words, she would have vanished after being taken there. As a result, she obtained the best ley line and the best protection. She easily occupied the Ryudo Temple, figured out the mechanism of the Holy Grail, and summoned Assassin as the fifth servant. But such things are trivial matters. She was certainly lucky on that night. Many miracles saved her, and she is now on the verge of victory. But they do not deserve thanks. She would have been fine. She would have been fine with it, even if those... Mm, God. Even if those miracles had not occurred. There is only one important fact. A very small matter that is trivial for anyone else. For her. The fact that she was able to meet Su... Su God, Suzuki? Yeah, that, no, that's a different character. Kuzuki Sorichiro is a miracle beyond belief. But it's not going well. No. She feels that everything she does is not going well. Her master will not be delighted with what she did. He has never had an interest in the Holy Grail. She would do her best to grant any wish of his, but Kuzuki Sorichiro had has none. A one-sided relationship. They do not get along well. It is not going well at all. I don't know who this is talking. Is this... This isn't Suich, this isn't Kusuki. Who's talking? So the mummy hunter became the mummy. Even the rare witch is fragile, huh? Sorry about that. Anyways, I was trying to figure out who the voice was. But I got called away. So, she turns to the intruder. It is not her master that is standing there. It is the knight in red, Archer, with his true identity still unknown. Archer? Archer? I thought I ordered you to keep watch outside. Yeah, but I didn't see any enemies around here. I got bored, so I came to check what was going on in here. I would assume so. The only enemy we have is Berserker. Even with him, we will go attack them ourselves once Saber is fully controlled. We have had nothing to fear since you joined us. Isn't that why you came to my side? Who knows? Don't you think I only wanted to break my contract with that master? Don't you think I didn't care who my new master was? There is some truth in Archer's words. But what does it mean? 
Archer had no intention of betraying, but betrayed his master only because he wanted to break his contract with Tosaka Rin. I see. So you did not like looking after that little girl? Well, it is true that servants are dissatisfied with their masters. It is natural for you to run out of patience with yours. No. She was perfect as a summoner. But some miscalculations occurred. And Caster, let me warn you. Do not consider all servants to be like you. At the very least, Saber and Berserker were satisfied with their masters. A righteous hero can only be summoned by righteous people. Eh, Strange Fake would argue with that, or would argue with that, but I I say that, but Strange Fake's entire gimmick is that everything is ass backwards, so you know. <laughs> Why tell me that now? A twisted master calls for twisted heroic spirits. You do not need to tell me that. That is right. Servants are determined. Yeah, servants are determined by their summoners. Summoners with dark shadows in their mind cannot summon heroic spirits who are on the light side. In that regard, she and Ryder are not heroic spirits. A twisted master calls for twisted heroic spirits. As Ryder was one that was beautiful, she was also one that was pure. It is ironic how the servant caster summoned is a fictional hero. How the servant caster- Oh, oh yeah. But it is indeed strange once I think about it. You and Ryder are ones that oppose the heroic spirits, but you two are still summoned as servants. That just goes to show that even fate uh, doesn't care about its own lore. Well, the Holy Grail does not differentiate between good and evil, so I guess it will summon anyone with powers, huh? Oh, more than you know in the future. Originally, a mixed spirit that had a heroic side would not have been called upon. Things went out of order starting with the Third War. Heroic spirits like Ryder and I were not summoned before that. I like that there's so much information about this Third War. Like, it's... Oh, okay. Not that there's so much information about it, but I like that there's... It's so in-depth that, hey, shit went wrong at this point in time. Like, what is it? Stuff happened that I don't want to spoil because we're not in Heaven's Feel yet. Uh, but also it's like, oh, you know, Ryder and Caster weren't starting to be summoned until that point because of reasons. Uh, but, like, literally when it comes to the Third Grail War, we don't know actually a lot about it. Granted, it could be worse. We could be in Tsukihime levels of bullshit where it's like, oh, yeah, there's a super main bad antagonist and there's a bunch of bad antagonists, but, um... Yeah, they're bad. They gonna do anything ever? No. They're just gonna sit there. Be bad. But we don't ever see them. Yeah. Then how do we... Oh, trust us, they're bad. Right. No joke, that's a big problem with Tsukihime. A bunch of it's like major players that are talked about are only talked about. They are never seen and they never do anything. That does not concern her now. She is not concerned about the true identity of the Holy Grail. Servant Caster's mission is to win this war. She is not interested in what comes after. No, to be honest, that is not the end she wishes for. Enough with the meaningless talk. Go back to your station. I don't care what you're thinking. You are my servant now. Your life is in my hands. Put that into consideration when you talk to me. Understood. Then I shall live up to my master's expectations like an obedient servant. The knight in red goes up the stairs. Seeing him off silently, Castor lets out a long sigh. One more day until Saber surrenders. She does not have the Holy Grail yet, but she will approach the end once Saber falls. What will happen when the war ends? Castor will make every wish come true with her powers. It is not bad to live as a witch, like she swore before dying. But, the reason will go away once the war ends. Even if she still has the will, her master will lose the reason to stay as her master. I will obtain the Holy Grail soon. 
Caster gracefully reaches out into empty space. Her hand, her hand, her, uh, her hard work is about to be rewarded, but her expression is like that of a criminal about to be executed. <laughs>